Hey, what's up, everybody? So I wanted to talk today about the power of a template sequence, right? So in Avid, if you right-click New Sequence, it's going to ask you where to save it. What happens is Avid gives you a sequence with four mono tracks, two video tracks, and nothing in it, right? You have to cut something, some sort of video into your sequence. And then, in a sense, you have a sequence that you can start working with and time and have some time on it, right? So the way to get around this so you don't have to do this every time you open a new project is to have what I call a template sequence. Now, I have my template sequence in a project that I call BT Works. My initials are BT, and I use Works, and I use this exclamation point, I don't know, just to, just to make it separate, uh, that I automatically know, oh yeah, that's my Works project. And in that bin, in that project, I should say, I have my effects bins, effects that I use all the time, and I have this bin called, I call it B Home BT Works, because this is my home setup right now. And in this bin, I have some elements I use all the time, maybe some effects that I use a lot. And I have what I call a template sequence. So I'm going to build the template sequence right now as if I didn't have one. So the first thing I'm going to do is load a new title. And now that I'm in title 2, what I'm going to do is take this little background color key and switch it to black, the deepest black I can. And there it is. And now I'm going to save that. And I'll call that timeline black. And I'll hit save. And I'll cut, I'll cut some of that in there. I'm going to lift that out. And now I have this little timeline black here at the end. That, if I exported them by accident, this is still fine, right? It's still black. So, again, I could load, right-click and load filler if I need to open up a ton of space if I want to. And there, you can't even see it now because there's so much space. But there is the timeline black at the end of the clip. So every video I have, every video I've ever made has this little timeline black there it is at the end of this piece there it is at the end of this piece because i think i find it very annoying to have it just sort of ends the piece right there so imagine if producer wanted to add i don't know another card or slate at the end of it it's very annoying to get in here and i would have to load filler here i'd have to lose the dissolve as opposed to when i have a sequence with the timeline black i have space at the end i have space to work with as needed so let's go back to that template sequence. Obviously, your template sequence depends on what kind of workflow you want to do as far as stereo and mono tracks. My normal template sequences have more tracks in it. So I, I keep A1 as a stereo track, usually for an audio mix down. That's just more of a workflow thing, depend, mainly at my main job. So I use it like that. But sometimes I don't need to. I did this corporate video right here. I used all stereo tracks and a couple of monos for sound effects. But you can call this A template sequence, maybe. Oh, and before I forget, I'm going to want to change the starting time code of this sequence and every sequence that I ever use again, right? And I will do this. I'll right-click in this window. It's, it might be different in some of the newer versions of Avid, but you can find this starting sequence time code, and I'm going to go 00, 0, 59, 59, and I'm going to change that little colon in the middle to a semicolon. Apply changes. And I will cancel that out now. Now, I have a sequence that starts at 59.59.00. And why is that cool? And why is that interesting? For me personally, the same, same reason. As if I have a little space at the end of every video, I want to have a little pad at the front. And in my case, I only need a second of uh, space here before my video starts. Straight up at 1.00. Hour time code, right? Hours, minutes, seconds, frames. So at the one hour mark, every video starts. So everything starts right a second before one hour. And you could take this back further, right? If you need to do some more purposeful slates or even bars and tone for, for uh, crazy old broadcast standard stuff. You know, when I made this video, I had to look some of this stuff up on Google because I never have to do any of that. I have a template sequence, and now what happens is, once I have this template sequence in my 
homework then every time i start a sequence every time i start a project all i am doing is hitting control d duplicating that moving that into my masters and that is what i'm starting from so i never have to do this so i think that even my original rough byte sequence i think i made it like eight years ago and i've just duplicated it thousands and thousands of times to start any project i work on one other thing i want to mention is that the frame rate of your template sequence depends on what frame rate your project was set on. So in this case, mine's a, like a broadcast basically at 29.97. So this template sequence is 29.97. But you can also, and I have that at work, I have a project that's a 24 uh, f frame per second project and I have a template sequence and right next to it I put right 24 frame fps or something like that so that's the idea of the master template sequence to save you some time so you have time to drink more beer what kind of beer should you be drinking i'm going to recommend this week the daily dose ipa from otter creek brewing company in vermont i don't know why my beverage barn beer store had it in there but they have it and it's cheap it's like a dollar a can which is really cheap for some ipas and i find it delicious it has a little more alcohol than i'm used to so i'm adjusting to that and the people around me ha are having to adjust to that as well so with that said anybody interested in learning avid go to avidbeer.com thanks so much for watching i'll see you in the next video